Okay, today's video we're going to talk about tracking an in-store um, campaign for an in-store or brick and mortar business running um, people that run have and have a brick and mortar business they want to run PPC campaigns but they have a hard time justifying it because they don't know what the heck it's actually doing for their business. They got customers coming in off the street. They got people that are regulars coming in. And now they have the, these PPC campaigns that are costing them hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a month, and they don't know what they're getting out of it. And for all respective purposes, I'd say the number one reason why people don't use PPC and or quit early, which just say, or even when it's working is because they don't know how to measure it, okay? There's no excuse not to measure. You can measure any PPC campaign, and this is no exception. Um, you know, and with that, you know, we can't expect to measure it by seeing if our bank account explodes. Because, as I mentioned on lots of videos, a lot of times you still have competitors. They want to get in on the action. You're talking about sometimes slim you know, numbers and margins here, you got to be able to have some method to be able to track it. And, and so I don't blame the people quitting who don't know how to track it. Uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't stop. There's plenty of ways to track it. And I'm going to go over what those things are. Respectively, there's no silver bullet with this. There's going to be several things you're going to have to do that add up together to be able to track and see if what you have work is working. Respectively, it's not when you do tracking of a PPC campaign that goes to a brick and mortar or local uh, physical location, you're doing it more than just to see if it works or not. That's one important component, but you also want to do it because you want to make more money. What gets there's a saying in business what is not tracked can't be improved, and that goes for you know your sales that goes for your operations, and it goes for your PPC, and especially your PPC. Why? Because with the power of data, we can see on how many different levels the people that are responding, their demographics, their psychographics, their interests, their behaviors, what leads to a purchase that comes from your PPC campaigns, and use a process of elimination to weed out the crap that doesn't produce any actual pr revenue uh, beyond your expenses or profit, better way to say that. Um, and then you know, there's 20% of what's there on an ongoing basis that is, and you want to be able, you got to be able to know where that is to be able to make more money and basically leverage it up, take away from the part that you're spending on the part that doesn't produce, you know, the 800% ROI, whatever you need to justify doing it and put it towards the part that is producing it so you can squeeze more out of that and then more importantly to build up a big fortune with PPC you go on and you try to run a different campaign once you got that going and it's refined and you do another and another and pretty soon you're you're generating several million dollars a year in revenue profitably from your PPC as a whole adding in some Google adding in some Bing adding in some Facebook yeah and doing a Google dis little display Google display network driving business in for people who are interested in your scooter shop, whether they're interested in your grocery store, whether they're interested in your local, you know, men's um, business wear uh, outlet, whatever it is. All PPC can is great for any of that stuff. PPC can work for any business respectively. I haven't found one that where it can't work or won't work. And if you have one you think where it doesn't work, you can leave me a comment and, and debate it with me. But with the local businesses, it's the trickiest, I will just say, not for me, but for, in general, the general thinking is it's the trickiest because there's no measurement element. But I'm telling you that's BS, and this is going to give you the information to track it so you know if it's working, to justify keep doing it, and actually get better results. You keep making more and more once you started. Or, and another last thing is, if you're not making what you want out of it, in terms of the ROI, you will make that ROI. It's not a matter of if, but when, because you know how to you have now have a way to refine it, to see if male versus female is working, or older versus younger is working, or did somebody you know on a mobile device versus a desktop what's working, and 
Yeah, so you can actually get to profitability and it's always going to be there. It's just a matter of how much profit can you make from any given source, given how profitable that source is. And so you're doing all this other marketing, respectively for most local businesses, PPC is going to be the number one for a local brick and mortar. As unlogical as that seems to a lot of business owners out there nowadays that run a, you know, a medical supply, you know, shop for people that are elderly for supplies like for stuff that helps them get in and out of the tub or, you know, to have a, a walk-in tub or something like that. People think, as it just a general thought is still, TV or newspaper, all that stuff works better for a business like that. And I can tell you, it doesn't. I've seen this, I've done this, I've consulted with people, I've told them, basically, it's a waste of time doing all that stuff. Not to say it can't work, but that, you know, a good, and where that comes in is you layer it in at last. Once you've actually generated several million dollars a year profitably with PPC, starting from a small amount, and then ratcheting it up slowly, and you've maximized and gotten all the you know low-hanging fruit there, you can do that wide-scale advertising to really lock in and become cemented in as a number one source of what you do in that local market. But it takes a lot of money, and it's like it's like. Uh, you, you, it's like putting a, uh, gl a drop in, in, in a whole ocean to be able to get that to work. So if you do a little bit, because it's so untargeted, and you have the targeting capabilities PPC has, have to narrow it down to exactly what that person's interest and traits and so on and so forth is, if you don't have a lot, it just doesn't work. Whereas on the other hand, with PPC, you could start out with a very small amount, run that until it's working effectively through these tracking methods and then do another thing and another thing and start out with a thousand a month and then bring it to two and then five and then 10 and 20 and just keep going until you've exhausted all the opportunities. You know, walking up the next little bit you do from the profit you made from the first thousand a month, what have you, or 500 a month, what have you. Even if you have a local furniture store, it's all the same thing. You go after people who basically are interested in what you have in your local area. You do it in a measured way and you improve it till it works. So doing all this other stuff it doesn't make sense. PPC is going to be your, should be your number one go-to. I've seen it time and time again. Somebody's saying they're doing st other stuff locally. I'm coming in doing PPC. It's working better. They're switching everything over to PPC uh, for the most part. And sometimes they'll bring stuff back in later. But respectively, it's a long, long time before PPC actually can't bring any more profitable business in and go and to the point where they may never actually bring in any other offline sources of advertising. So it's very, very easy to get PPC to work for your offline brick and mortar business. And this is how, respectively, how you do it. Um, if somebody for a local product or service or what have you, well, we were talking about lo local brick, brick and mortar We'll just put it this way. Somebody's looking for what you have locally. It's all a geo-targeted geo campaign. If they're looking for furniture, let's say, you geo-target in your area how far you think the people are willing to drive to get to you. And, then, and if they're searching for a couch, you have an ad essentially that shows up and says, You're, you have couches, you can get them elsewhere, you can get them online, but we have them local. And you send them to a landing page that basically says, if you want to see our online selection of couches, you can click here. However, know that we have a local branch that you can walk in at any time. And we have the map here that shows you where it's at. And respectively, we have all these great reviews. Make that known. And we're actually going to give you an incentive that if you mention what's on here um, and you come into the store, we'll give you a little extra discount as a way to kind of maximize the responsiveness response rate from what you're doing. And generally, that's the general formula if you were wondering in general how this is done. Uh, I've got other videos that talk about strategy for brick and mortar PPC, local brick and mortar PPC. But this is how you track. So, But it all comes down to what you're doing there. It may not be working right away. You can't expect things. It's not a light switch. It shouldn't work right away. You're investing a certain amount of money that you're willing to lose up front, whether it's 500 a month or 1,000, and you keep running it until you have enough data to cut out the 80% that doesn't work, and then now you got something that's gonna be profitable. And so that might be three months, it might be six months, just to know that you're gonna stick with it until it's actually, you got enough data to where it works, and that, stick, that starts with also tracking before you spend a single dollar on ads. Most people go in, they don't wanna wor worry about tracking, 
they set the ads up, they run, they don't even know if they're working and eventually, you know, they get tight on money, they shut the ads off and it was a whole pointless activity. You should go in understanding what your numbers are that you need to hit, set up these tracking methods, run the ads, where you're not getting your numbers, you shut off the parts of the ads that aren't, or more specifically, you downgrade the bidding and say, I'm not willing to pay 30 cents a click, I'm willing to pay 15 cents here because this source of traffic here coming from mobile doesn't actually pay off for me unless I'm paying half of what I'm paying right now. That's how the system works. But um, to do, to determine if someone, the, 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 trick, the tricky thing is for people and why they can't justify the PPC for brick and mortar is that they can't track if somebody saw the PPC ad and then they ended up coming into the store and buying specifically because a lot of times they don't call, they don't email, they don't do anything. You're, you're hoping and the idea being that if they're looking for a couch, they click on your ad, they see your landing page, see you offer a couch, and then they drive in without saying anything, and how do you know if it works? Well, I'm telling you right here that it can be tracked. To track if they come in t to your store after they see a PP online PPC ad, or if you want to call it brick and mortar PPC, uh, brick and mortar business, whether that PPC ad drove an in-store purchase or a visit, can be done several ways and you kind of, like I said, there's no silver bullet, but you can add it together and get it to work. So one of the ways by in which if you're using Google ads, there's store visit tracking, which attempts to track if somebody clicked on your ad and then later on came in the store through the tracking Google has when you have download uh, a Google app on your phone, somebody clicks on the ad, you come in with your phone later in the store and it ties and mashes together to the data and lets you see, um, it'll show right there in your Google ad account automatically. It's an automated propagated goal that says store visits, how many people that they track coming in to your store. And I'm gonna tell you if the, how that works as well. But respectively, it's not the everything. It's not the silver bullet. You wanna have a few other ways to track. When you track all the things together, now you have a pretty good picture it's going to take you most of the way enough to where you can build up this multi-million dollar a year campaign uh, and having enough data to, to actually leverage and do so with what you to refine and know your campaigns are working and making better and build everything up from that the way I said. So there are several ways to track a campaign that require a physical visit in which they're not going to respond when they get to your landing page. Of course, some people can respond, but obviously if a lot of people don't respond before they come in, then you got it. And a lot of times you have to be able to track that to be able to do well with PPC still. So if they're not coming in without an appointment, sometimes you can get them to, you know, if you have to, it's by appointment only. Obviously, that's a whole, that's an easier thing to do. Tracking a call, uh, listening to the call, finding out if they have an appointment, or filling out a contact form for an appointment, that stuff's way easy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how do you track somebody who sees the ad, comes to your landing page, sees your local, decides to come in because you're local and does nothing until they get to the store and respectively they buy and you want to know who that was so that you can see that it came from the ad, that it worked and that you can refine your ads. Um, as a quick note, people who, you, most people think that if they do want to track, the way that they do this is they simply ask the person when they check out, where did you find us? I can tell you that the common common misnomer is that this will work. It won't. What will happen is, is they'll say, I don't know, Google. And then you'll say, even if you say, is it an ad? People don't know. People will say Google and that's all you'll get. So you don't know if it's an organic click or a paid click. Respectively, maybe that'll help you somewhat, maybe it won't. But that little bit of data as to whether they came from Google or not, is it enough to really know if the PPC campaign's working and more so, refine anything. So you can't just rely on this if you want to build up a multi-million dollar a year ad campaign for yourself in 90% of the occasions. So to do that kind of tracking where they come in without responding first and then getting find out if it worked, your first line of, of doing that is a store visit, the store visit quote unquote tracking, which like I mentioned just a minute ago, where Google gives you right inside your ad account if you go into split rows, you can Google that in your Google Ads account, it'll say store visits, and it'll say store visits by campaign, how many store visits you got from how many people they tracked who were on their mobile device when they clicked on the ad and then later on had the mobile device on them 
and realize that that person came into that location. Given they know where the location is because you have Google Maps, Google Maps tell them, tells them the address and then they can tie the address to the geolocation of a uh, uh, function of the phone that they came into that location of yours after clicking on an ad. That's how it all kind of works if you're curious. Now how accurate is this by itself? I haven't done a, an actual sophisticated audit on this. All I can tell you is it seems to capture at least a third of the people. So if you had nothing else besides this to, to d decide if something works or not, you could. it would be obviously better than nothing, but it's not good enough. I'm not going to tell you at all to just rely on this. It's What you want to do, all you're going to end up doing here is you're going to add up lots of different tracking sources and you're going to mesh and meld these data, so these conversion tracking data sources together to get your full picture. So you have this, you can rely on this. Ultimately, you run your ads, and then I do. I don't do automatic automatic bidding because a lot of times it draws in a lot of crappy leads, um, irrelevant people coming in, stuff like that. So I'll run an ad for every keyword, and you'll know that if you see my other videos. But I can do manual bidding, I do enhanced CPC bidding, and when you get a store visit from mobile versus desktop, now I know what to bid on, assuming you have at least uh, a good you know, 30 store visits already, from, you'll get to see if you should be bidding, X, what you should be bidding on mobile versus desktop and assign very specific mathematical bids to each one using what they call a bid modification formula. And you use the bid modification formula on you know what zip code they're from, time of the day, day of the week. You should be doing it on all, the, all, all these levels because that's where the results come from. There's a certain type of customer in which if they saw your ad when they were looking for a couch would be profitable to you and which ones they would not. The second way though you can track to kind of fill in the gaps of where the store visit tracking uh, doesn't work is map slash driving direction uh, download campaigns. So what you have is on Google Maps, if you have you know, Google My Business set up, then if somebody clicks download driving directions to my phone on Google Maps itself, that'll come up as an auto-propagated auto goal in Google Ads. Um, you can track those. That'll help you give you a little bit more in, in addition to the store visit tracking in case they didn't, you know, somebody downloaded it to their phone but for some reason did not have their phone with them. When they visited the store, there was a glitch now you have a little bit more data in addition to the store visit goal that you, to modify your bids the way that I mentioned to you there. Second to that, driving direction download. So I mentioned at the start of the video what you do is you have a landing page and what I always do on these, in these brick and mortar situations is I have a picture of the storefront so they can see right away it's local and then I'll have a map here that shows hey if you want to know where this is at you can just click here. It'll say driving directions and there will be a link. And if I click on the map or the link to dri driving directions, I've got a goal set up so I know that they were interested in coming in. And that'll pull forward all the people that ultimately would. So maybe they won't want that right away. They'll scroll down first. But they know already because they've seen it where to go if they want to see where it's at. And if they click on that, now I know that person. It's not as good as knowing for sure if they came in, but it's pretty darn good and it's another data point in which we can add to the full data set to decide what our bid should be set on our account, what we should be paying for, and how much across the account. So, respectively, they can click on that link and they'll be taken to uh, Google Maps and they can download, of course, the, the map will pop up and then they can download the directions there. So you'll have a separate goal for people who click on your little map and driving direction links link, which it's the same goal if they click on the map or the driving directions link. Essentially, both take you to Google Maps. It'll fire and say they were looking for driving directions. And that will be a separate goal in Google Ads. So that'll be in addition to people who go to Google Maps on their own and download the driving directions without clicking on your map or dedicated link to go to Google Maps. So now you have three data points. The store visits goal, people who download, the, the auto, the, which is an auto-generated goal Google does for you. And you have your download driving directions goal that Google has in your Google Ads account and does it for you. And now you have your manual first go, manual goal that you set up to where somebody clicked on your map or driving directions link to indicate that that person actually was or is going to come in. Obviously, some people will say, oh, it's too far. So, but to fix that, you simply just, you'll learn 
what's the maximum kind of distance people are willing to drive before it's not profitable anymore and then you'll squeeze the uh, radius target in your location settings to, to, to go you know further into where this tracking becomes reliable uh, again if you want just the, or you may go wider if it's really profitable go a little bit wider and you can split test the, like, how far out you go you should definitely do that for your business so there's your third piece of data fourth piece of data we get into the discount codes so basically a lot of for years for 50 plus years people use coupons and stuff to d identify if like newspaper advertising would work. They'd cut out the new, the coupon, and then they would the coupon would correspond with a certain publication, and they would know if that publication it worked. That's the old school way of doing it. There's a way now where you can have software that will generate a custom discount code for somebody. As I mentioned on the landing page, you'll usually have a mention this for an extra 10% off, specifically to gather some data, extra data. Um, so you eat the 10% to be able to get a mountain of more data about what, how your ads are working or not working. You have a custom uh, discount code, right, that, um, you know, basically once they, so it'll, what ultimately it is, is that you'll have a script and there's some software out there that can kind of do this, but essentially essentially what you have is it, it, you have a script that will give the user, so it will say 10% off mention this discount code, but the discount code they get is going to be a little bit different, RQX7, whatever. It's, a, it, it, it's something to be, there is something to be said about whether or not that is harder to remember and that being a drawback, but respectively, we're talking about tracking here and it does do tracking well, but if you have that, then when somebody comes into the store and uses it, you can see then basically that that person that visited your site on that particular session bought, okay? Because they'll use that unique code when they get to your store. One other kind of vari variant to this, by the way, you can do is to say, uh, mention this code enter, and you have to and click here for the code and they can click and then you have to have a pop-up where you have to enter your email address and then you email the code to them. And now you have your, their email address, you can see people that way. And then you can take that email and you can upload it to Google. And now Google gives you all the hidden data behind who that person is behind that email address in the audience, um, the audience menu inside Google Ads of what their demographics are. And it's another way to get insights about who's buying. Um, respectively, the, once you do this, by the way, you'll have in Google Analytics, all, what, what you should have is the discount code, when, it, when the page renders, the discount code will render, it'll, the script will render a, a custom discount code for that person, but it'll also put it in the URL dynamically. And so basically when somebody goes in and uses that discount code later, you can go into Google Analytics you could see all the discount codes of all the visitors that you had on the landing page, and then you can then tie because under um, what, there'll be a there's a section in Google Analytics where you can see all the you, the uh, pages that people went to on your site. So you have a list of pages, all which have their own unique URL and this unique discount code, which was there for the user there. So basically, you can find the session, in other words, of the person who used that discount code later on. You can see the male versus female, all those other substats, you can study whether or not that, that, you know, what that person was like and ultimately that they bought. And respectively going further, there's a way to upload. So at the end of the day, you have, um, what, you have all of these discount codes that people bought. At the end of the month, you can upload to Google Analytics using their uh, uploads feature. And then under the um, basically under those list of pages there, it'll say, you can then filter it because you've uploaded which of the discount codes uh, converted. You can, you can mash the data together there. You may not want to do this, maybe you do, but ultimately you can then filter in Google Analytics to you can see all the people who actually used that discount and purchased and filter it down that way so you can see on all the different menus just the people who use the discount codes and who they are. So that's a way to unlock, uh, essentially, when somebody that's coming in and buying, that 
you can that wouldn't respond right away, wouldn't normally bring in their phone, wouldn't normally download, uh, click on or download the driving directions, but would actually use a a discount code that you gave them because you have that ab with, before they scroll or with, as they call above the fold when you scroll down on a on a landing page, that when they use it, you can use to, that to see all the the who they are, when they responded, and so forth. Google Analytics will be able to, you'll be able to, when you have that, and import which discount codes that, that you used, that bought, that you had to Google Analytics, you can now see all the other features that, of, the, of that user in Google Analytics, male, female, whatever, because Google has all that data on the user. You cannot use that data in Google Ads, unfortunately, to modify your ads. It could tell you in Google Analytics a lot about which users are using the discount code and buying. Ultimately, you can upload how much the value of the purchase is as well. They spent $70 versus $200. You can also upload that to Google Analytics so you can see not only did they buy, but what was the return on investment potentially, or how much the value is so you can see which people bought the bigger purchases for the smaller versus the smaller ones. You can use that data you find in Google Analytics to go into Google Ads and manually adjust your bid. So if you in Google Analytics, you see the people who use the discount code the most and went, made the bigger purchases were female, and they were 45 and up. You can go into Google Ads and you can adjust your bids. So if they're not female and 45 and up, you're spending half as much because the traffic's worth less, and you just do it by hand like that. But that's one way to track a brick and mortar campaign that a lot of people don't think of or use that can work and does work and have seen that work before. The last way you can have a, another way to track these brick and mortar campaigns is a supplementary tracking uh, added to things. So very rarely will I do what I'm mentioning here and not also do phone tracking and form tracking in addition. So because everybody has a different desire or method of preferred communication. Some people like coming in some people like calling. Some people like filling out the contact form. Technically, some people like live chat, which is why you should always have live chat, as long as you can man it and it's not just sitting there because that really hurts you more than it helps you, in my opinion, to, to, to just leave it there, have somebody fill in the form and then not respond ever. It pisses people off. So as mentioned, on my typical brick and mortar landing page that we're using to drive PPC traffic to and monetize that traffic, you have the, the store up here. There'll be a quick way to find out driving directions, and then if they screw, and then there's a quick way for them to see all the and click and go to the part of your site that has all your online inventory, so they can see more information there. They can go research more about what you have in stock, or they can just simply come in. Their choice, depending on who they are and what they like to do. It'll also say if you have a question beforehand, just fill out the contact form here, and we'll have somebody call you back within. Um, I would say suggest within um, 24 hours at the very least, uh, even though you will technically probably call them back sooner. Um, or you can just give us a call now and we'll have a, somebody talk to you before you come in to make sure that you know, you're not coming in and it's not a waste of your trip. You want to use actual language like that, by the way, if you want the best response. Because you, if you ever want to, it's just a quick hack to know how to get better results, talk in language that people are thinking in. To make sure you don't have a waste of trip, give us a call first to talk to our customer service rep versus call number. Try that out and I promise you it will work. And obviously you can apply that to lots of different situations. But So we'll have a phone and form tracking in addition to things. So they got many ways that they can go, you know, they'll divert to. Maybe they'll want to just come in right away. Maybe. They'll want to fill out the form first. Maybe they will want to call. Maybe they will want to see a, our inventory to see what we have in stock, make sure that we have the kind of products that we want before they come in. Or maybe they will make, we will want to make sure that we have the kind of service they want before they come in. Um, respectively, if you have a derm, uh, dermatology clinic and you're looking for an XYZ type of treatment, your landing page, there's no excuse to not if they t look for that type of treatment, that you take them to a page that talks about that type of treatment. So they don't have to go and look on your main site if you have it. But if they're just typing in dermatology clinics, there should be always a link to say, to see all our exact list of services 
that we have uh, before you come in, you can click here and then it'll take them to a list of all those services listed. And if they click on those, they can see a, a, a page about that service specifically. This will help anytime you're going to eliminate potential risk and or uh, anxiety about a purchase, the more money you're gonna make. So in that situation, it helps the person realize that I'm not wasting my time before even calling because a lot of people won't even call before they feel comfortable because they might get harassed. Call, they, they don't like to spend the energy to talk on the phone until they know. So you're trying to make it as easy as possible for them to buy, essentially, in other words. And, um, but that's the kind of just general formula that works good for brick and mortar, as I found whether it's product, whether it's service, and we're gonna track a phone and a form um, separately as goals. And when you add all this up, you got store visit tracking, you have map, they download driving directions off the map, or they click on one of our, our image of the map to get, or link to get driving directions, or they use our discount code, or they call first, or they fill out the form first. Technically, if they go see your online inventory, I'm gonna set up a goal for that. That's not real useful, but I'll, I'll collect it anyway, just because it'll give us some, an, some a, if we don't have enough data to make some modifications, it'll give us enough data to make modifications in those certain areas, such as uh, we don't have enough campaign tracking to know if Sunday's good or not, but because we have that extra data point, we do now. But you add them all up, the, you now have enough quality data there to make really, really strong decisions about what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing, and you know what you're ultimately trying to come up with here is if they do any of these things here the likelihood that they're going to buy because you're going to have to run some numbers um, the likelihood they're going to buy is x and the likelihood they're going to spend this you know the, the, the average the amount they're probably going to spend is this so that you can adjust what you're willing to pay for each set part of your account so that you can dial in a respective return from your campaigns that you have going and go into other campaigns that you can run and do the same thing with so because you don't necessarily know all the way if somebody does any one of these things what the average potential value of that person is so you can precisely adjust your bids on your account will be you're going to have to kind of guess my thing um, to you simply would be to try to divide you, you you'll you'll understand about how many of these you're getting per month and if you shut off your ads you'll, for, for a month or you double down on the ad spend and you'll watch how much your revenue goes up and you'll watch how much these, these, all these goals added together go up and then from that you can kind of derive what the value of each one of these goals are. That way, specifically, that, then once you do that, you know, you can make money all day if they at least completed one of these things here and it didn't cost me more than $20, I'll take all, all of them I'll get. And then you can then double down on ones that are, you know, only costing you $10 in terms of what device they used or what zip code they're from or what keyword they used um, or whether or not they've been to our site before or not or uh, so on and so, or they've been, um, you know, to our competitor site before, which I've talked about how to do that in other uh, situations. You can actually, modify your bids and what you're willing to pay and use what these you know what, what I mentioned is called bid modification to get more results on a bunch of different levels like that and so you're trying to boil it down to a number of what if they did any one of these things it's basically worth this to me so I know whether to bid more or less and just take the traffic and investment into traffic as a whole what I got and really break it down into subcomponents so we can decide okay well you know, we're paying $30 for one of these actions. We need to be paying 20, but if we go in, we bid less on mobile versus desktop here, well, we, we hit our numbers, but you go further than that. You go and you do it on each keyword, you do it on each other subsegment of the account, and that's where the really big results come from. So you get the general idea. So the two main goals slash ways that, um, that the, you do this for your company is you'll know how well the campaigns work, it won't tell you everything about how well the campaigns work because like I said, a bigger way to know if you're making money or not is to quick double your budget, don't do any more marketing and any other sources quickly, um, see how much your overall revenue jumps and try to drive things that way. But 
like I said, you can, after you've done that, you can divide the number of goal, trackable goals you have by the revenue jump and you can see the value per goal. And then as you go ahead and raise the budget, you'll know respectively before actually watching where the numbers end up at the end of the day about what you expect to be making and that you shouldn't, you're not having to sweat that you're throwing your money out of the toilet at that point because you've already now understood how your, your goals that you have, how they contribute future reven revenue to your business, let's just say. And uh, you'll know secondarily who buys from you to refine your ads, like I talked to at uh, nauseum here about bid modifications and understanding how to add these goals up into essentially one conversion goal figure and using that figure based upon what you know what you should be that what a conversion should cost here on the front end to adjust your bids on each submetric of the account that's possible same thing can be done on Facebook ads any other place that you're running at PPC ads they have a way to break it down by gender by age demographic by device and you use all those sub-segment points you can and you adjust your bids on each one you can or just eliminate them if you can't adjust your bids to get your results up and so that you can take the money, so you can be profitable, take the money you have there to build it into another PPC campaign, maybe on another platform, maybe you bring in Bing and just keep stacking your results. If you want to be the 500 pound gorilla in your space, that's how these kind of guys get here. They may not be as sophisticated as that, but respectively they're reinvesting at the very least and they understand the relationship between the ad spend and their revenue and they're confident in it so they can keep reinvesting instead of being scared and not doing that which is the main reason why like i said at the very beginning of the video why people don't do ppc in general for a brick and mortar business to start with so anyway hope you enjoyed this video I have a lot of other videos on this channel about other ppc money making strategies you should check those out definitely if you have not seen any of my other videos I have a blog at guaranteeppc.com slash blog with step-by-step -step instructions on how to build campaigns that are effective and, and get our, current, our clients' uh, results every time in which we have to guarantee the results. If you'd like information along those lines, you can find it there. If you have any questions or comments, anything that you think you should have covered about brick-and-mortar PPC campaign tracking or in-store PPC campaign tracking, uh, leave me a comment down below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a question or comment on this channel.